Hi, I'm Christopher Walker with Closely Observed Literature. This is a short review of Erwin Mortier's Shutter Speed. Let's find out a bit about this book, shall we? So I figured since Shutter Speed is about the last summer in the life of a, a young boy, it's the last summer of innocence, we could say, the young boy called Joris in uh, Belgium. I thought since, since it's that last summer, maybe it would be quite fitting for me to tell you about the book as winter renews its lease on the land here in Poland. It's supposed to be spring today, come on. And we had a massive amount of snowfall last night. My girls are happy, they're out playing on the, um, on the slopes here, going down on their sleds. They seem to be enjoying themselves. Uh, my hands are just freezing off, it makes it a little bit hard work, especially in the mask breathe all that hot air in. Anyway, getting a bit off topic. What do I think about shutter speed? Well, this is another of those lovely uh, Pushkin press books. Uh, they're always very good value for money. Um, sometimes they might be a little bit boring, but they always take a chance. I'll be doing a review of one that I did not like very much. There have been a couple I didn't like very much, but they're always worth reading. I love European literature. It's, it's almost a genre unto itself when you think about it. Anyway, what's the idea? Well, the conceit here, and the reason that it's called shutter speed with this kind of image on the front, the idea is that uh, everything is provoked by a series of photographs. Uh, the young boy looks at the photographs of his uh, departed father. He doesn't know how he died or why he died. We never really find out, but it's always kind of alluded to that it was drink. Uh, his mother has run off to to kind of drown her sorrows in another country. I think she probably had the you know, the boy when she herself was quite was quite young. So it's it's that kind of story. I mean, it's <laughs> it's along similar lines, I suppose, to what you find in films like Shazam. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a story that's been told many times. Uh, that's not really the point, I suppose, of this book. The book itself, um, based on these these little images that come flickering through and the photographs that he collects. It's a, t a unifying device that is moderately successful, but I wouldn't say that it's uh, quite enough to carry the novel forwards. So it is quite a short novel. Uh, it finishes quite a long way before we reach the final page, in fact, and there is a kind of uh, epilogue of a chapter or so in length that deals with what happens when the boy grows up, but we don't really find out very much. This is not a book about concrete facts. If you come to the book hoping for concrete facts, you're going to be slightly disappointed by what you find. But that's the way it is. It's elegiac. If you look up the word elegiac in the dictionary of literary terms, you will find a picture of this book, no doubt. Either that or Proust's uh, In Search of Lost Time, I don't know. The Madeleines of Proust are reflected in the photographs of Mortier. So, yes, it's all about that last summer. He's living with his aunt and uncle, and he's innocent of the ways of the world. He doesn't know uh, what it is exactly that the aunt and uncle get up to when, they, when he ha hears her giggling and the, the upstairs bed rocking slightly. He wonders what they could possibly be doing. He's very innocent for a 12-year-old, you have to say. He's living with them. Uh, because um, it's his father's side of the family, it's his twin brother in fact, so it must be kind of weird to live uh, under the same roof as somebody who would be the spitting image of your father in many ways, but isn't your father. So that's explored to an extent, then he has, uh, um, he's one of these, um, he's a boy with his head in the cloud, so things happen to him that wouldn't happen to people who are a little bit more sensible and aware of themselves in the what the world is doing around them. So there is that aspect of it as well. You know, an exploration of what it is to be a young boy who doesn't quite understand what's going on in the world and why things are happening as they are. So it's all well related. The writing is never boring. You can always pretty much follow what's going on in the story. I would have liked a little bit more detail, but that would have missed the point of the book. Are you going down, Susie? Childhood, eh? It's a mystery to us all. It's nice to read these books about childhood so that we can see what's going on in the heads of the children around us. It's that sense of adventure, that longing for freedom, discovery. 
it's captured well. Daddy, so overall, I would say, yes, darling. <laughs> I'm being. You'll say that, will you? I'm doing a book review, Matilda. I'm going to put the mask on if I go anywhere near people. Is that all right for you? <laughs> See, this proves my point. <laughs> That's my daughter Matilda, she's six years old. She's so more worldly wise than Joris when he's 12. And I don't know if that comes from having a stable family background or if it just comes from personality differences. It's very possible that it's more that than the other. But I like reading books like this. It's a, you know, it's a minimal effort. I mean, it's only a couple of hundred pages. It'll take you a day or two to read. So is it worth it? Yeah, I think so. I'm glad that I read it. It's another lovely Pushkin Press book, as I mentioned. So, yeah, take a look at it. If you see it come up in, a, in the sales on the Kindle, for example, if you go to a charity shop and it's there, it won't be my copy. I'm keeping it because I love the, the appearance of this book. It looks very nice on my shelf. love the spine. That's nice, isn't it? And there we go. That's this book. And that's it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you to my darling Matilda for telling me off about wearing the mask. <laughs> ah, bless.